I'm Karamo, and my last meal would be curry goat with white rice, plantains, plantains as we call them, and sweet corn drink, a five-tier lasagna and spinach strawberry salad, fried chicken with sweet potato mash and broccoli with cheese, then rice crispy treats and a bowl of Skittles, Starburst, gummy worms, and gummy bears for dessert. Every person has exactly two things in common. We all gotta eat and we're all gonna die. Today we're joined by culture expert from Netflix, smash hit Queer Eye, whose seventh season drops on May 12th. He also hosts the Karamo Show. Karamo, welcome man, thanks for doing it. I'm good, thank you, I'm glad to be here. I wanna ask about the importance of food on Queer Eye, because you're not the food guy, obviously, no. but there was a meme going around a while ago that like, Karamo comes in, he exercises people's biggest emotional demons. He changes their life, he makes them cry. Bobby is building a house from scratch, blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. Anthony's making guacamole. <laughs> but can you tell me about the Listen, y'all don't underestimate my boy uh, with what he does in that kitchen. I'm the biggest apologist for Anthony because I agree, I'm a food guy. Seriously, I, I, I'm i the one who, by the way, always ruins his scenes because I go in <laughs> and like eat half of the things that he's cooking. But what he does is he gives people the confidence, like myself, who don't have good diets, mm. this opportunity to understand that food can be fun, can be sexy, but could also nourish your body and give you the energy you need. And that's a skill, because if you come into my kitchen, it is trash. It is full trash. You don't what do you want, mean? What, what kind of stuff are you cooking? Nothing you want to eat. Like, I'm looking at your body, nothing you want to eat. Like, it is like, take out, it is like, my fridge looks like I have, I do have kids, but my kids are older now. My fridge looks like, my kids are still seven and live with me. You gotta just start telling people that you got a seven year old at home. If anybody criticizes you, you'd be like, nah, the Gushers, that's from little Johnny Jackie. Look at that. He loves Gushers. You know what? All right, done. Lying done. is good. <laughs> done, lying is good. We have our third thing we're gonna dissect on our lag brunch. We, 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 I'm, I'm just counting them up right now. D you said do things that you hate. Yeah, pain is good. Pain is good because? Oh, because you hate yourself. You hate it yourself. Makes it, that's right, that's right. And that's you right. also said love needs to be earned. Love needs to be earned. <laughs> Which is not good. So don't worry, I'm collecting. It, I am collecting all of this in my mind for <laughs> the end of this interview, okay? If Queer Eye needs an anti karamo <laughs> can I just come in? I think it'll be, your message will be stronger if I just come in and I'm saying the opposite. Exactly what I say, yes. <laughs> all right, Karamo, for the first course, we got Jamaican curry goat, white rice, plantains, as you would say, and then we got the sweet corn drink, which is something that none of us had ever heard of, and I'm so <laughs> glad that I have heard of it now. Um, I'm glad, this is one of my favorite dishes. If my mother knows that I'm doing feeling down, this is what you cook, this is what I'll eat constantly. My best friend will come over the house and I'm constantly ordering curry goat, curry goat, curry goat, curry goat. But I want to make sure before we have this, you just say a couple of Jamaican words for me since you've never had a Jamaican on this show before. Nobody can clip this out of context and get me canceled. No, I'm not, gonna ever, I'm not gonna say anything that's ever gonna get me canceled. Um, so you just say wampum. Wampum? Yeah. What wampum. does wampum mean? Hi, how are you doing? Oh, just like, hey, wampum. Wampum, there yeah, you go. There Ready for eat. Ready for eat. Ready for eat. Boom, that's it. Wampum, that's ready for eat. We're, wampum, we're ready for eat. <laughs> all right. There is like some weird fantasy thing going on in my head right now, knowing that I'm sitting where Tom Hanks is. I was wondering why you smelled the seat before he sat down. I did. It was him. But we're here now. Tom Hanks, oh my gosh. He, him, Jonah Hill, <laughs> Shamar trying, Moore, and Post Malone. Your, trying to figure out your type, and I can't, I can't <laughs> find. I'm like drawing out the graphs. Chance the Rapper. Just put all of them together, and that is my ideal man. Whose legs? Jonah's legs. I'd want him to be like, you want him to be short? No, I like tall men. Okay, so we're so gonna have Tom Hanks, yeah, height, yeah, because he's tall. Jonah's. <laughs> I love when I think of Jonah. I'd have a lot on Jonah, uh, but I like, I like thick Jonah. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I love healthy Jonah, yeah, but I sure. like thick Jonah. He seems like he's doing great. Yeah, I want Chance's face. Um, I want Shamar's arms and eyebrows on him. Oh, and maybe that curly hair that he used to have back in the day. Oh, that sounds nice. And his skin tone. Yeah, so and just mix all that up. Uh, you know, Taylor's literally gonna make that Photoshop and put You're it in. You're gonna make that Photoshop? Yeah, yeah, Taylor's gonna do that. We'll send this you, is gonna we'll send be the you ugliest copy. man you've ever seen. It's, it's like a monkey paw wish. Exactly. It's like Frankenstein's monster cobbled this together. This is the ugliest man you're, ever. You're not gonna be attracted to any of them ever exactly again when you ever. see that. All right, dig um, in, dig okay, in. Okay, great. Do you eat with a spoon or do you eat with your hands? So, funny part is, I was gonna do this because 
of Americans, um, I get embarrassed because I don't eat with forks. My best friend knows this. I never eat with forks. I believe forks should be banned. That's like a real thing that I believe in. I, the Church of England, not that the church is in a lot of their bands are technically good, but they banned forks for hundreds of years. They said it was against God to not use your hands, and I believe that. Uh, well, listen, I support this. Cheers. Cheers, man. I like this. Um, so, by the way, everyone calls these plantains. Mm -hmm. It's plantains. <laughs> I got you went right to the plantain. Plantains. But get every bit of it. Oh, my you got it all in one bite? Good. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, she hated her food to touch. I thought that was the weirdest thing. She would have to have a bowl of rice, a bowl of goat. Plant, Interesting. Plate of plantain. I want to get it all in one. Mm. You know I'm trying to work out it look like you. Let's do it. Let's go to the gym right after. Not after this. Why not? <laughs> this is your dirty trick for the world, isn't it? What? I'm starting to learn your toxic ways. It's been five minutes. Yeah. We're I, like, like, round I picked one. them up from the beginning. Damn it. You look like this. Mm -hmm. And then you feed us all this. Yeah. Knowing we're not gonna go to the gym after. And then you're gonna go to the gym and work it off. You act like it's a trick. That's just hard work, man. That's what this is about. Sounds like a trick to me. <laughs> it sounds like a trick to me. Just to let you know. Speaking of toxic masculinity, <laughs> you talk a lot about masculinity. Mm -hmm. You've talked about growing up with the messaging that violence is good, and that's something that a lot of people can relate to, right? Talking about being on the football field, getting high. The pass. violence is not good. Well, oh, sorry, that um, aggression is rewarded for young boys. Yes, yes, right? yes. Like yes, on uh -huh. a football field, getting yeah. rewarded for knocking people out. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what to you a non-toxic form of masculinity actually looks like. So it's something that I've struggled to actually eloquate. What does it look like? I think it varies for each man, and I think mm -hmm. that's the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, is like it shouldn't be this binary thing where it's like to be toxic or to be not toxic, you have to be this one way. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you showing up and being your authentic self? Are you showing up and you're 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 being strong, but you're also being vulnerable? Are you mm -hmm. being happy but also allowed to be sad? Are you are you encouraging someone while also knowing when they've had enough and being okay with that. And so I think it as long as you are showing up yourself and not hiding a piece mm -hmm. of who you are, then that's the perfect person. So it's yeah. not as simple as just being like, aggression bad, being soft and vulnerable good for everybody all the time. Yeah. But it's like, what is actually authentic to you? Because yeah. otherwise you're not actually letting people in and affecting you, you're not actually affecting them in real life. Exactly, because if, you, if you're gonna be aggressive and you're gonna have somebody who, who receives that in that moment, they need that aggression to feel like, I'm pumped up, yeah, yeah. great. But what was the communication with them before? And I don't think there's enough communication with young boys about what they're feeling. We just assume you're young, you're supposed to be strong, you're supposed yeah. to go after this. And there's not that that sort of grace that sometimes we give young women when they're younger. Mm. Of like, okay, before we start, can you? And I think there's a bit of toxicity in that as well because then you start to, I've met people who underestimate women. Yeah, and so they 100%. start to come in as little girls and like, oh, she can't do that. And it's like, yeah. F off, she can't, uh, you know what I mean? So I think it's about, not being toxic is about just communicating and talking and sharing. I cried on your shoulder before we even started walking in here, man. I was That was, I was a fake already. cry. We're going to get the real one. We're going to get the real one. I don't think, place your bets now if I start crying by the end of the episode. We get 50 I'm, I'm not going to do it to you here. I'm not going to do it to you here. I'm not going to do it to you here. You're like sneak up on me when I'm in line at the 7-Eleven and I'm just going to start crying trying to buy my Monster Energy drink? Yes. Damn, The man. fact that you just said a Monster Energy drink mm. is the reason I'm going to make you cry. That, that alone is part of your toxic trait you have to get rid of tomorrow, okay? Okay. You will pry the Monster Energy drink out of my cold, dead hands, <laughs> I, I didn't swear. You know right now. <laughs> Since I met you, you said Old Spice yeah. and Monster Drinks. Okay? Yes, I am your nightmare. I am ready to be clear-eyed Carambo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think whatever works for you works for you. And yeah. as long as you're going to try corn juice. I didn't mean to do it unsurred. No, no, it's like, good. It looks really good. It's, it's all right. I, got, I made you uncomfortable. So the first thing we do when we're uncomfortable is we grab That's something. actually why I love this show. Well, uh -huh. I mean, like, I hope you love the show. But that's why I love doing this show is because if anything gets uncomfortable, I'm just like, yep. <laughs> yep, let me go into go it. Right into the food and drink. So with corn juice, um, by the way, which is the best dish ever, my mother used to make this on Sunday mornings and it would be gone within an hour with me and my siblings. You have to, it's just, well, we used to call it condens condensed milk, but it's mm -hmm. condensed milk. Yeah, yeah. Um, with corn, and you take a sip and you chew the corn. Oh. Blood clot, this is good. Oh my God. That one sounds dirty, I understand that one. I don't know who came up with that, but whoever did, corn cheers to you, because this is good. That is there good. any way that we can make that messaging 
more attractive to young people than this new wave of like right wing toxic male influence. So you got guys like Andrew Tate out there who are attracting hordes of young followers. But how do we take this message and actually make, say a 15 year old is pissed off the world, make them understand? If we really want to start this, I think the narrative needs to shift where, um, you know, like that idea of like men being the head of the households, it really mm -hmm. should be women are the head of the households. And that should be the narrative that we push, that they are they are the final word, not mm -hmm. just like some joke of like, yo, she gets the final word. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. no, all women in our community should get the final word. We just have to, it's, it's really, I'm gonna tell you this, it's more so within each of our communities, mm -hmm. gay for me, straight for you, we have to have just better conversations with our friends. Yeah. So what are you doing to have a conversation with your friends? Mm -hmm. It would be the question, what are you doing? Yeah, no, so this is the thing that I very actively took up in college. So I was a, I was an athlete, I was a shot put uh, discus thrower. Yeah. And this is actually when all of the um, Trump locker room talk discourse took oh, off, yeah. right? But um, anytime we would hear somebody use like a homophobic slur, like we would just shout them down. You know, and it was me and like three dudes that we were like, we're going to nip this shit in the bud. But they would start doing that and we would start playing the most annoying music in the in the world and just like laughing at them. So you'd shame them. So we'd, we'd shame them, yeah. But in, like, <laughs> in like a funny way though, right? Yeah. Like, I, because like you said, you, I'm not one, the best educator, mm -hmm. the best person to talk about yeah. that, but I can at least try and, um, do a little bit of carrot in the stick to try and influence somebody's decisions. So I will tell you this, I think any effort that someone is trying to make mm -hmm. to get someone to be better is great. But I also encourage all of us, and I, I say this for myself as well, is like think about the tactics we use mm -hmm. because those same tactics were used on us to make yeah. us feel as if we had to be more toxic. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage like, okay, with, well with that now, like now you shame me. Yeah, so yeah. now once I'm not around you, I'm mm -hmm. gonna double down. Yeah. And I'm sure most of those guys double down. And this is in the gay community as well. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with um, gay men where I'm like, stop encouraging this narrative of like, I don't understand these other alphabet letters or I don't <laughs> understand you know, trans people. Yeah. I don't understand these things because you're just adding to it. And so for me, what I try to practice right now is one-on-one -on -one conversation. You've done an action. I'm gonna bring up the action and I'm gonna say, I understand why you thought that was funny. But I also realized that it could be hurting somebody. Did you realize that? Mm -hmm. Put the question back on there. It's course one. You got me rethinking my whole life. <laughs> I just wanted to have some jokes and some oranges. <laughs> I don't know. I'm talking about my my grossly deformed boyfriend. <laughs> Can we name him, by the way? Uh, I, it's up to you to name him. Tom Chen. Yeah, for Tom, Tom and Chan. Chan. Tom Chan. Tom Chan. Tom Chan. Tom Chan. And then we have Shamar and Jonah. As well as Bertrand Feldstein. So if you if you want to put Feldstein in there, I think giving him a Jewish last name. A last name? Me. That's representation that we <laughs> need. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tom Chan Shemstein? Tom Chan. <laughs> that's my uncle, Tom Chan Shemstein. Tom Chan Shemstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your yeah. uncle. Yeah, he used to play basketball at the JCC. <laughs> All right, Karma, for your second course, we have a five-tiered all-cheese lasagna. I mean, there's like three pounds of cheese in this bad boy on tomato sauce. And then as a palate cleanser, we got the spinach salad with strawberries, carrots, mixed nuts, craisins, and a lovely homemade raspberry vinaigrette, which we had nobody had ever made that before, because I think that salad dressing stopped being a thing in like 1997, but I love that you're bringing it back. I mean, that wasn't back. a joke, I'm, but- I'm back, I'm, it's back. You're the culture guy. You yeah. are influencing yes, culture right yes, now with yes, the raspberry yes. vinaigrette. It's so funny, every time someone says that, they're like the culture guy, I'm like, I'm a I don't know about mental health. I have no taste in anything else. Like literally, I can barely dress myself in the morning. I'm bald, so I don't have to do my hair. Like, I only thing I can work on is this and this. Anything else outside of that, like. It is um, funny that they put that under the umbrella of culture. I was even thinking, like, I don't know that Anthony's poured a wine, but he's still the food and wine guy, apparently. Yeah. But a lot it's, of this it's, is it's a nod. Yeah, from the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, this is delicious. Can I serve you some salad? Please. I, like literally. Mmm. This is your last meal though. You're going to the salad during your last meal. You're about to die tomorrow or tonight or right now. Not in real life, but- We talked about that and, and how morbid that would be if like, mm -hmm. I got no car accident after this. Are you a safe driver? No. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I love speeding. Yeah, let me tell you something. Ooh. My sister started making, had to cook for us when um, my mom and dad were going through the divorce and this was like the first thing she learned how to cook, mm -hmm. which then she taught me. Um, and it's, the reason it's full of cheese is because she didn't ha know that you were supposed to do even amounts of layers of mm -hmm. cheese and and things. Um, what is this called? What is Pasta? That called? Pasta. That's the <laughs> Pasta. You are the culture guy. <laughs> the culture guy, you get it now. It has almost the same ratios of mac and cheese, but it's in lasagna form and it's kind of beautiful. Mm-hmm. Mm. Speaking of death, what happens when you die? Oh. I'll pray nothing. You just want to. You just want to rest. I'm, even though I identify as a Christian, mm. I don't believe in hell. 
and I don't believe in heaven. Okay, interesting plot weird. twist. Yeah, it's I'm a Christian, but I just don't believe in those concepts of like you're you go somewhere else, and all of a sudden like everyone has the same amount of or whatever the case may be. What I do believe in, and this is where like it varies as a Christian, is that I do believe in science and what we do know about. Um, energy is that it can either be created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. We know that we are just nothing but energy. Yeah. So energy has to be transferred to something. So I believe that when we die, this energy gets transferred to something else. It could get transferred to multiple things. So I do believe that my energy will get transferred to one thing if I'm thinking intently on it, maybe, or it will out, a little bit a little bit of me will be in your next pasta meal, and like you'll I was gonna say, eating. I'm tasting a little caramo. Yes, yeah, you'll be just a little, the that, little smidge. That's got real dirty, real quick. Smells like quick. Chanel. Yeah, yeah got real dirty, real tasting quick. Caramo. <laughs> tasting caramo. That, yes. That's gonna be the TikTok clip. Exactly. What do you want your energy to be transmitted into? Where do you want it to live? Like a Taco Bell ice machine? No, definitely. That's what I want to go out as. I don't believe that with your body. Let's you want to be a Taco Bell. You your body doesn't want anything to do with Taco Bell. Don't all even I want to do is release all of this. This, Cromo. this is a burden. I want to release it onto so, Taco Bell. So you feel this this idea that you have to be perfect as a burden. Don't make this about me. No, Karamo, this is about no, you. No, no, no. I'm Karamo. catching. We have it now. You are thrust into father. <laughs> <laughs> we understand now. It's a burden. Okay. No, I hope to be thrust into like, definitely want to be a woman in my next life. Mm. I hope my energy comes in back as female energy. If you could be um, one woman right now, who would it be? Like, who's your, your model for the next female Karamo? Ooh. That'd be good. My sister Camelia probably. Is she like better than Beyonce though? She's better than Beyonce. Damn. Yeah. Can we get her on dope. the show? <laughs> yeah, Can she's we... pretty dope. Get down here. She's pretty dope. She's better than Beyonce, seriously. Though, you know, I think best Beyonce and I are best friends. Did I ever tell you that? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no, we met eight minutes ago, Karama. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. That. I share a lot in a short amount of time. <laughs> um, do, yes. Um, so Beyonce and I grew up in this, you know, we're only a year apart. I, we grew up in the same we neighborhood. We're a year apart. So I I believe that from year three to eight, we went to the same playground and we hung together and I pushed her on the swing and we like played in the sandbox. And then one day she's gonna see me and she's gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're the kid from the playground. I'll be like, yes, Beyonce, that was me. <laughs> Take like, me on tour. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you're having like serious conversations. I'm talking about my ugly boyfriend, no. celebrity boyfriend and Beyonce. Rama, all this is related. This is all culture. <laughs> I feel like this is all, <laughs> this is all pop culture. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, right? okay, great. Not believing in a traditional concept mm -hmm. of heaven and hell in certain Christian circles that, you know, isn't the most mainstream idea possibly, depending on where you're going, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Also, Christianity not had the best relationship with the LGBTQ community. Why is it important for you to sort of take up space in those places? I think one of my purposes is that I'm supposed to, I've, I am okay with being in spaces that have, have been hurtful to other people because I know my purpose is to be there mm -hmm. to help heal that space. And so for me, I talk so freely about me being a Christian and Christianity and me have a cantankerous relationship because obviously mm -hmm. I started letting people into my life. I don't use the term coming out because I, I, the act is actually letting people in. Yeah, of course. And I think this undue pressure we put on LGBTQIA plus people to come out. Uh, as if they're the problem exa for existing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like we should feel the power to know that I can let you in when I want and it doesn't mean that I'm ashamed of who I am. It means that I'm respecting my boundaries and my space. And when you've proven to me that you are respectful and loving of who I am authentically, then of course I'm gonna let you in. And this idea of like the closet, all that stuff, I'm always like, if there is a closet, there better be a pot of gold in there for all the BS we've been through. And then I'm gonna burn that closet down right afterwards. <laughs> um, so when I was letting people into my life, Christianity was hard because there were many people that were like, no, no, no. I mean, my father is a very religious man. Mm -hmm. um, he's a Rastafarian. People usually equate Rastafarians with like um, Bob Marley and yeah, smoking weed, but it's not. It's like a very deep practice of like how they get up in the morning and study mm -hmm. the Bible. And so because of that, we had, we were estranged for almost 15 to 20 years. Damn. No talking, nothing, because he couldn't reconcile his relationship with his re religion mm -hmm. with his relationship with his son. Do you think that was taught to him by other people or do you think he actually say like got that idea from scripture? I think that inherently scripture is not bad. It's meant to show people to be better, mm -hmm. but then people take one sentence out of a book and yeah. then it's what we do today <laughs> on social media, on sound bites. We take one thing and then we cancel somebody. But within religion, it's toxic because it becomes this idea that this one word means that this is wrong or they're wrong or they should do this. And for me, it's 
my journey and my purpose is to be in those spaces and say, okay, now that you're focusing on this one word, let's pull you back a little bit more. Do you see any other words? Let's pull you back a little bit more. Do you see any other words? Now that you see more words, what are the context of those words? Mm. And it's important for me to be in those spaces because it works and I've seen it work. My father and I now, after all these years, in the past three years, have the greatest relationship because I was patient enough to be in that space to say, do you want to look past this? Mm. Do you want to grow past this? And um, I'm thankful that I'm able to be in those spaces. I don't recommend anyone else to be in those spaces because I'm not for someone else like putting themselves in harm way. But for me, it's part of what I'm supposed to be here to do. I guess, why you though? You know, like, like why do you assume that burden? Does that ever get tough? Like you're obviously entitled to your own self-care. You're entitled to not have to take that on. I've been counseled before because I've been um, nice <laughs> to people who politically I should not have been nice to. Yeah. Um, I've relearned how to make those approaches um, so that people understand that I'm not crossing over to a darker <laughs> yeah, yeah, side in a sense. I'm gonna talk to you because I know for a fact for most people, being black, gay, of immigrant parents, first generation American, growing up poor, but then becoming financially successful. Like I'm, I'm an anomaly to most people. Yeah. They're like, I don't get how this works in the world. You're like the Shamar Moore, Tom Hanks, Jonah Hill, you know, Frank I understand monster. how that works. Yeah. I understand how that works. If you ever spent one night in my fantasies and my dreams, you would understand how that combination works. <laughs> I don't like all these too. zombie men that are walking around. Our right, for the third course, we got the southern style fried chicken. We have broccoli steamed and smothered in cheese sauce, and then we got the mashed sweet potatoes, plenty of butter, sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, butter, all that stuff. I named butter twice, that was intentional. Yeah, because there's a lot of butter on it, it's but that's how it's butter. supposed to be. So this for me is growing up in a Caribbean household, like I told you before, my parents are not from this country. I didn't eat American Southern dishes. Mm -hmm. So all my black friends would always be like, what do you eat, goat? What do you eat, ox? What is this? And then like slowly I was like, well, let me try your food. And this was sort of the meal that I got introduced to and like made me feel like proud of my blackness, you know what I mean? Cause you know, it's, it's, it's weird when you're from a Caribbean household, mm -hmm. sometimes you're not taught to appreciate black American history. And so I learned quickly how to appreciate and love black American history and it started with like this meal. Please, uh, serve yourself, I'll serve you. Man, I'm just gonna dig in on this fried chicken. This looks too good. The broccoli with cheese sauce. This is a clutch one that I literally, as I was like eating this, I was like, man, I'm gonna start making this at home. This is lovely. Yeah, I don't understand why people um, have broccoli and it does not have cheese. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> Seems like a wasted like, opportunity. Like stupid, like, wasted opportunity. no one wants this without cheese on it. Like that's the dumbest thing on the face of this earth. Um, if you could just like turn away real quick. I'm sorry to uh, <laughs> No, you can. No, I, Everyone I at home, know. you should know. I hate hot sauce. Oh, I smell it already. Ugh. Oh, did you just, okay. did you just put you that in your mouth? You gotta prime the palate. It's called an amuse bouche. You taught me that earlier. Oh, it stinks so bad. <laughs> sorry, I didn't know it was that. You're, are you just being dramatic right now? No. Or this is real. Someone get the hot sauce away. Now if no, you're no, 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 you're okay. You told you're me okay. you're like my best no, friend. No, my best Trey. friend does it. You're like, Trey does no, it. Trey does it. He does it. Trey's giving me a thumbs up. Over there. How can you eat that? <laughs> I'll eat the hot sauce bite first so it's gone. This one's gone. Why would you want that on your food? It just ruins mm. it. The pain is good, Karamo. It's exciting. It makes you feel alive. Fourth. There we go. Pain is good. He's keeping a running tab Pain on my is toxic good. This is the one part where I think Beyonce and I would not get along because she keeps hot sauce in her bag. Swag. Swag. Man, you already know. So like. Best it, friendship it, with Beyonce is over. Done. Done. <laughs> you were uh, sort of thrust into fatherhood when you found out when your child was 10 years old mm -hmm. um, and it was a complete surprise to you. Do you ever yeah. find yourself like repeating toxic patterns or negative traits that your father had? Um, so. The way I answer this question is you have to ask my son mm. because my intention is always to do the best with him. I think that I'm not doing the same things, mm. but he has his own experience. Sure. And so what I've learned from my own father's toxic traits is he would talk about me and be like, no, 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 I didn't do that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, girl, yes, you did. Um, and so for me, I'm like, I got to talk to him. And I do have transparent conversations with my son. I'm always like, tell me, talk to me. I'm not going to have an ego. I don't think just because I'm your father that I can't hear the truth. Because I think sometimes parents get stuck and they think I'm parent, I know best. No, my child is a living human being who has experiences that I might not have had that can help me to be better. And so when I talk to him, I'm like, if you have something, talk to me. If there's an action that I'm doing that's not making you feel your best, mm. tell me and like, let's talk it out. And it's, it's real, like this is real. And um, if Jason's watching this, you know I love you and you can always talk to me. How 
honest do you think that Jason is being in those conversations? Because, uh, you know, you're not obviously the first parent to say talk to your kids, you know, but I know anytime my dad tried to have a frank conversation with me, right, I didn't actually feel that there was that space that I could be honest, but how do you create that? So I don't say talk to your kids, I say let yeah. your kids talk to you. That's the first thing, the switch, is because he's coming to me. So I'm not sitting him down and yeah. saying, hey, tell me about this, because now there's undue pressure. Mm -hmm. It's about you get to express to me when you're feeling something. And one of the other things that I've done since he was, I got custody of him when he was 10, is Jason has never gotten in trouble for being honest. Mm -hmm. Because I think we do a disservice to our community and to our kids and to our world when we tell people that if you're honest, you get in trouble. If you've done something bad, which we're all human beings trying to figure out how to navigate and live on this spinning rock, if you do something that you didn't know how to do, I'm gonna make you, you're gonna get in trouble. But it also meant like, if he messed up and he came to me and was honest, I didn't punish his honesty. Mm -hmm. And he knows that there's a space that he can say whatever is his truth because I'm not, it's not gonna be met with my anger or my disappointment or or my expectations. But then there's also things that, you know, just being a human being, like, he still gets embarrassed about. Like, he was addicted to drugs and I had no idea. Mm. Um, and it, during the pandemic, um, I actually found him overdosed in his apartment. Man. And um, you could almost got me to cry on this one, but, but I'm all cried out right now. Um, he was laying in a pile of, like, cat litter, his cat litter. Like yeah. that's like foaming from the mouth. And I thought my son was dead. Yeah. And I realized the reason that I didn't see anything is because one of the things that I didn't want to do that I did do is I put him in category. Mm -hmm. And I didn't let him to be a holistic human being. So I have two sons and he was the son that never got in trouble. Yeah. He was, the son he was that a good ever, kid. He was a good yeah. kid, yeah. You know, and not saying the mother kid wasn't, but it was like that idea of like, you, don't worry about Jason. Oh, Jason needs a car? Yeah, Jason can take the car. You don't gotta worry, you don't gotta worry about Jason. He's a good kid. I used to say that proudly, mm -hmm. realizing that it was limiting him from being a human being. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, so once you did something that wasn't the good kid, you hid that. Everything else you felt like you can talk to me about, but the thing that made you not a good kid, you thought you'd be a disappointment in my eyes. And I realized like, damn, I screwed that up. So therefore, when he first experimented, he told me, and I said, okay, well, how was that? What did it make you feel like? You know, like, this is where it leads. Mm. But then as it got worse, he was like, well, now I can't tell dad. Yeah. And um, and so almost him almost losing his life has shifted, shifted our relationship as well. He went to rehab. He's been two years sober now. It's been good. And so good job to my son. Good job to your son. No, I mean, that's, that's an incredible story. And I know you... You know, struggled with addiction yourself. I did. A lot that's why I thought he could talk yeah. to me. And then I realized, oh, shit, you know. Do you think him actively knowing that he was the good kid made him sort of want to rebel? Do you think he felt that undue pressure? Or do you think it was just you didn't have it in your mind that he could have done that? Um, I think there was a, a bit of both. Mm. And also, I think, like, he grew up out here. This chicken is good as hell. Yes, I, shout out to the chicken. Why right, black season this? No, oh, yeah, it be, yeah, yeah. No, be, be, be season it, yeah. Oh, good, okay. yeah, yeah. I can tell, okay. Black. Yeah, good job. Yeah, there. somebody black season this, uh -huh. good job. Um, no, I do think there's a bit of that pressure of like those things that you said, but also I think it's part of it is he grew up in LA and um, LA is a very funny town, like even in navigating your 20s. Yeah, you were introduced to stuff before I even knew because at 15, we I wasn't introduced to drugs. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the most of it was like, we smoked a little weed and it was like, oh my gosh, we are like so crazy. And that, we're, that was what drugs was back then. That was drugs. Yeah. We were wild. Yeah. Like, we smoked <laughs> weed. We were wild. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I didn't really have those conversations. I wasn't thinking about the environment. I was thinking about my narrow view of what my life was and how he I put him into that. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking like, okay, he's in a different environment. So... What do I need to learn about this environment to help me be equipped to be a better parent? And so all of those things are, I think, are the reason why I didn't catch it. All right, Karamo, for your final course, which you did already start eating, and I gotta call you out for that. We got a big old bowl of candy. We got Starburst, we got Skittles, we got gummy bears, we got gummy worms, and then we got the whole plate of homemade Rice Krispies. Listen, this is actually what I eat for lunch every day. I, this is actually the real lunch. You keep saying that, I don't believe it, man. And you keep saying you never work out. I don't believe that either. He's he's pulling up the photo evidence. Now. No, I'm not. I'm not even gonna do that. I'm not even gonna do that with you right now. Are you just texting at the table? Uh uh. I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling. Him. You bring on they a special him. guest. They bring on a special guest. This though. never happened. First in the history. Barack Obama, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just a dude who looks like Barack exactly. Obama. Exactly. Can you him? Hey, slut. 
Hey. That's Bobby. I was going to call you the same thing, but I don't know you like that. Hey, Bobby. Tell me something. Is this not the meal I eat constantly during when we're filming? Thank you. I love you. Go get your hair cut. You're beautiful. I love you. Bye. Love your work. Um, I told you. I just, I did, I just FaceTimed Bobby Burke. Like, I didn't even look like Barack Obama. <laughs> no, you did not. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. I was going to ask you, if I was a hero on Queer Eye, where would you start with me? The thing is, is that you would never be in candy on Queer Eye because <laughs> your hair is great. Thank you. Your skin is beautiful. I started moisturizing a week ago. Yeah, really? This is a real thing, yeah. Good job. Never used it before. Good job. It's going to work. So your skin looks great. Your body looks great. Your jeans fit perfectly. I saw the shoes and the no socks. Cute when you walked in. I looked you up and down. Very great. He um, noticed the no socks. I didn't even think people noticed the no socks. It's the parent. Observe it. Appreciate it. Um, and so the only category that you would need help in would be mine. Mm -hmm. So as we're editing my guy, my super guy, mm -hmm. can we now put a running list as well right here of all of the things that I pointed out that you have said mm -hmm. during this show? Josh's toxic traits. There we go. Do we see them right now? Do we see all of your toxic traits? Oh, yeah. Now, these are the things that we would focus on. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. We'd figure out how do we deal with these things? Because underneath these things, there's something going on. And I know you keep saying to me that this is not who I am. This is all jokes and fun. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. And, and I, I do. <laughs> no, it's I, not. I, no, I do. I do use this show as like an outlet to where I can kind of say these things in a very safe space, be able to play certain things off as jokes. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, there is a lot of truth to them. And I've, I've been like very vulnerable about my own background and stuff, um, you know, to the camera, which I was actually going to ask you about having to be so vulnerable for your job. Is there almost ever too much vulnerability to where it gets performative and you feel like you're saying stuff just to say it and not actually feeling it? No, because I don't fall into that trap. Damn. Um, I don't do it. And I think for you, like one of the things that I appreciate about you is like even, we're not gonna go deep into it, like when we were talking about your childhood and you know, you're talking about your father and your mother's mental illness, I think those things are important. So many people in your audience, my audience, people who watch us both are gonna be, have experienced that, I understand that. Yep. Let's be real, you're a very pretty package. <laughs> And Thank people you. could assume that your life is very, very easy mm -hmm. because it's very easy to look at the exterior and think like, oh, this guy's already got it. He has the, mm -hmm. the, the fiance, he has these things. And then when you talked about your ex a little bit with me, I don't remember if we did that on camera or not, but when you talked about your ex a little bit. They've heard about her. Yeah, well, we talked about that. Like that type of vulnerability really helps people understand that even those that you think have the package still experience things mentally and emotionally that make them feel as if maybe they're not worthy of something and maybe they, they don't deserve something or maybe they have to fight for something even when it's not healthy for them. And I think that you're doing the work to grow past that and I love that you're sharing that with your audience. Yeah. I feel like after you... I'm being serious. I feel like after you say these things, you should go, boom, queer eyed, and you should yell it at people. <laughs> I'm just saying, a catchphrase I think could sell more merch. Uh, but no, thank you so much for saying that. Boom, I, queer eyed! I, he got me. He got me. Man, someone put him in the ring. Oh, no. Uh, no, but thank you so much for saying I, that. I was um, sincere about that. That yeah, wasn't yeah. like sincerely. I deflect with humor. You've noticed. You've, you've I, met I, me for two hours. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Can we add that to the list? <laughs> that would have been on there as well. Like. Do we have room down here? I'll move the water. I have humor. to apologize to Taylor for making the edits difficult just because of my ADD. And now we're adding a graphics package. Graphics, listen. You got Venmo with Taylor 20 uh, bucks. I man. will, I will. Uh, um, <laughs> you ready to get in the lightning round? Sure. Let's do it, man. Other than me, who's the one person dead or alive you'd want to share your actual last meal with? Who I'd want to share my last meal with? Mm -hmm. Damn, that's fucked up. Tom Sham Shemstein? <laughs> yeah, Tom Sham <laughs> Shemstein. No, my, who I'd want to share my last meal you with? You can only pick one. You got to alienate all the other people you say no to. Okay, if I'm gonna be real, it, it, it would narrow down to two people. And I think one of those people would be more emotional and I'd wanna have my last meal having fun and really like talking and like really having a good time and reminiscing. So the last two people that I'd wanna have a meal with would be my sister Camelia or my best friend Trey. And I'd pick my best friend Trey because I know we would like- No, it's just cause he's in the room. No, it's not, I swear to God, it's not. I would pick, I'd pick him because I know he wouldn't like spend the last couple of hours crying like a baby. He'd be like, oh, bitch, you remember when you look like this? And I'd be like, yeah, girl, I remember that. You know, so I'd like go away like, like smiling versus like we're in tears. And, Cause I'd have to comfort her. Yeah. Even though I was dying, I'd be like, girl, it's okay. You're gonna be all right. You'll be fine. And he'd be like, bitch, I'm not crying. Trey, he, your emotions are valid. I want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got better facial hair, you or Jonathan Van Ness? Me. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, who's your dream eulogizer at your funeral? Um, Jonathan Van Ness. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really good. Oh He'd be God. like, honey, he was a mess. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Who plays you in the biopic about your life? Um, well, we're actually, I just sold the scripted show about my life. Okay, who's playing the biopic in you about your life? Uh, like, so, like, so someone's gonna play it. I <laughs> I would hope to cast Jeremy Pope if he's watching this. Um, he's not, you know, or Lil Nas X if you're watching. You know, oh, hell yeah. either one of them. You know, it's on a major network. You'll see here about soon. But anyway, <laughs> what song do you want them to play at your funeral? Like, you got one more track to go out with. One more track? Mm -hmm. No, it'd probably be like like some Beyonce. Yeah, fair. Yeah, or we'll Jill Scott. Do Jill Scott. Or Leanne Rhymes. Got a couple. It's more like a one song. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, are you happy? Extremely. You seem happy. Yeah, I yeah. am. Karamo, thank you again for joining us on Last Meals. This saying is tall, dark, and handsome. Bitch, why would I not be happy? Okay. <laughs> I thought those were your last words for a second. Those no, are my last words. Last words. Let me deliver the last words. I'm uh, tall, dear. dark, and handsome. Bitch, why would I not be happy? Put that on a damn t-shirt and I'm buying it. <laughs> okay. Karamo, again, thank you so much, man. This is incredible, everybody. We don't have a live studio audience, but we kind of got our own yeah. live studio audience. Hold on, can best friend Trey come so the world can meet him? Best yeah, friend Trey. Trey. Trey, Trey, come out. Best friend Trey, well, hurry someone, up. Someone get him in hair and makeup. I would have my last meal with you. Come on this side. Hey, Trey, come in, man, join. <laughs> Hi, best friend Trey. <laughs> Uh, I actually had a whole set of questions for Trey if he got another three hours. <laughs> uh, for real man, Trey, hey, thank you so much. Karamo, thank you, brother. Thank you man. <laughs> we're, gonna, a pleasure, a pleasure. we're gonna meet up. Yeah. Uh, please uh, tell people where they can find you. You can find me on social media, at Karamo, on all things. You can also watch me daily. Um, look, check your little listings around the world on my talk show, Karamo Show. Or you can catch me on the new season of Queer Eye, coming out on Netflix on May 11th or 12th. I said 12th. 12th, 12th, I don't know. 12th, 12th, I don't know. <laughs> the Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.